Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ron Wallace here with Balling Down South Sports Network here with another episode of the interview. This is our second interview today, and I can tell you, this person I have on next is no stranger to playing defense on the basketball court, but I guarantee you I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit about her history, and I'm very sure she have her young ladies over down there in Georgia playing defense. She's from, she was born in Montgomery, Alabama. You, you Alabama people hear that. She's from Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama. She played three years at Fort Valley State where she was defensive player of the year. All three years she was there. Then she transferred to Armstrong State and graduated there at Magna Cum Laude. Two Division II championship appearances in the Elite Eight appearance, I can tell you. I'm going to go ahead and bring on Georgia Southern women's head basketball coach, Anita Howell. How you doing today, coach? I'm good. How's it going? Pretty good. Is it raining down there in Georgia? It's not, thank God. It was raining a couple of days ago. It was on and off. It was like raining and sunshine and raining. So my mom always said that's God and the angels having a little argument. <laughs> I that's now that sounds like an Alabama term. I could have swore I had my grandma <laughs> tell me that same thing. Yeah, can, well, I'm a gal, so I have some southern stories. Well, I can tell you this. Go ahead and tell the people who don't know who Coach Anita Howard is. Go ahead and start where you started, your, where you're playing, then you went into coaching. Go ahead and tell the people who you are. Well, um, I actually started playing um, in Savannah, Georgia High School at Alfred Eli Beach High, High School in Savannah, Georgia, home of the Mighty Bulldogs. And so all my Savannah people out there, my Bulldogs, hey. Then, and I signed with Fort Valley State University. Um, I actually would have went to Fresno State, but that's a whole nother story. So I decided to stay home and I went to... Fort Valley State University, won a few championships there. And then I came back home to Savannah um, and I finished up at Armstrong Atlanta State and we won another conference championship. So um, from there, I, I graduated from Armstrong and um, I started my career as so I thought it was going to be in photography. And so um, I was a fine art and, and design major in, in college, but I still love the game of basketball. So I began coaching at a rival in Savannah, at Savannah's, Savannah High School. And so from then on, um, I helped Brandon Clay with uh, Peach State Basketball, AAU in Atlanta. And then I got picked up to be an assistant coach in North Carolina at Winston-Salem State University. And so from then on, I've been coaching college basketball. I kind of moved up the ranks. I was an assistant coach, an associate head coach. Um, I was a D3 um, head coach, D2 head coach, and now I'm a Division One head coach. And so I I've kind of hit a lot of different stops along the way. Wow, you got you got a lot of experience, a lot of experience up and down uh, yeah. from the lowest to the highest. So I, what I want to know is, do you make your girls play defense? Because you you having that defensive background yourself, getting those three consecutive years in a row. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm all about. So we use a term called swarmification. So it's not in a dictionary, but, you know, it's one of Coach Howard is one of my words, and it's a swarming and suffocating defense. Um, actually, at my last stop at Division Two at Columbus State University, we were number one in the nation for our defense. And so I would love to have that that championship kind of caliber accolade outside of a cutting down nets. That's that's kind of one of my biggest accolades as a head coach. But I love defense. And so I play for a high school coach who loved defense and, and my Fort Valley State, Lonnie Bartley, he loved defense and it kind of was just embedded into me. Now getting get into, you know, to those Division Two championship appearances and the Elite Eight appearances, uh, basically what, what, what did it take, you know, to get you guys uh, there with the school that you were with at that point in time? Well, I guess I've been blessed to win several championships as a player and as a, a head coach. We actually won a championship at my first stop, Division Three, And so I've kind of been known for changing programs around, taking them from the bottom of the conference to the top. And so at Salem College in North Carolina, it was a Division Three program. They were at the bottom of the conference. We ended up going to back-to-back -back championships and, and winning one of those. And I had back-to-back -back player of the year on that, that squad. Um, and then when I left there, I went to Livingstone in the CIAA conference. And we led the nation – and I, I think most consecutive wins, I think it was 24 straight wins. I think Don Staley at South Carolina, we were kind of neck and neck of who was going to lose the win streak first. But, of course, um, Don Staley did a great job that year. Um, and then I got to Columbus State, won a championship, a region championship, and then we did go to Elite Eight. And I think 
some of the, the consistent denominators in winning those championships was really the ability to build relationships with the players. Of course, you got to bring in the players that can win you some games, but you also got to build those relationships. And so that's one of the things I kind of pride myself on it. And I bring my staff in that also have the ability to build relationships. And so that you get players to buy in and believe what you're saying so that they want to play hard, not just for their teammates, but they want to play hard for the coaches as well. And so I think that's one of the things we did. You know, teams always say you want a family feel, but it's kind of hard to do. Because female athletes, we're emotional beings. And so you're going to have people that are having bad days. And so as a coach, you got to figure out how to keep things kind of even keel. And so we have a little fun. If if you had to say one thing about Coach Howard, I, I know you know about TLC because, you are you know, oh, yeah. we're in the same age bracket, I think. So TLC is crazy, sexy, cool. That's what I am. I like to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> I'm serious on the court. I like to be a diva on the sidelines and you just have fun with it. And so I don't take it too serious, but of course, like any other coach, I do want to win. Well, now your, fir your first year there at Georgia Southern, you guys went 10 and 20, 7, 11 in the conference. You guys ninth seeded. Uh, and of course, you know, you guys lost in the first round, but getting that, getting to the tournament, playing your in-state rival, Georgia State, talk a little bit about that game. Yeah, so definitely in-state rival, we hate and i hate using the word hate but i have to say it when you talk about georgia state we dislike them a whole lot so i, I really like uh gene hill and his staff actually my cousin is on this on the staff there but you this is a game that whatever sport you play at georgia southern you have to win this game with the football baseball um and this was the first time in I want to say 10 years that they had actually beaten Georgia State. I know it was the first time that the seniors on my roster, which we had five of them, they had never beaten Georgia State in their career at Georgia Southern. And so uh, we swept them. We beat them both times at, at um, Hanner Fieldhouse in Statesboro and then also at their place in Atlanta, which also helped us get into the tournament. And that was the first time we were able to make the tournament as well. So it was kind of a twofold win. We was able to beat our rival, and then we was also able to get a bid to get into the um, Sun Belt tournament that was held in Louisiana. Now, with the girls, that, some of the, the girls there, I'm not sure exactly how many seniors you had last season, but the girls that you got coming back on your roster uh, that helped you guys get you know, to the Sun Belt tournament, uh, what, what can you say about some of those ladies? You know, taking over a program, we had it was very senior led. So we had six seniors. I brought in one who was a graduate transfer from Louisiana Tech, um, who played really well for us. But the other five seniors, they they bring us a, a sense of experience, kind of a veteran feel. And so we actually will, will return our leading scorer in Tatum Barber. You can see her helping her teammate up there in the clip, and we call her Tatum Tough. And so she's. A uh, beautiful blonde haired girl look like she should be cheering on the sideline, but she is <laughs> tough as nails. She is tough as nails. She she was never hurt to our eyes. You know, it's funny. We was playing Old Miss at Old Miss and she got elbowed in the eye. Blood was gushing out. The trainer was like, Tatum, you're done. And she was like, no, you know, stitch me up. I'm ready. I'm ready. And so she returns. And so she'll be a senior for us. And to have someone that's been under, you know, my tutelage for one year, um, and know what to expect out of Coach Howard and what we, we expect on the court. I think it, it speaks volumes because um, she is our returning leader scorer. She wants to win. And so now I think my staff and myself have put the mindset in place of how hard we want to compete. And so this was the first time I've had a losing record as a head coach. But it's all time that I've taken over a program at the Division One level in a strong conference. And so our record doesn't indicate just how good we actually turned the program around. You know, even though we lost some games, we should have won, we were competing. And one of the things that I, I say all the time is, you know, to change people's mindset is, is difficult. You know, we had six seniors and they've been learning certain things um, for, for three and a half years, you know, coming in their, their freshman year. And so you got to change their mindset. So they're almost like freshmen again, because they're learning a new system. They're learning a new coach and a new staff. And so although we had seniors, they had to learn a whole new offensive set, a whole new defensive rotation. And I thought we did a really good job and we were competing um, with, with some of the top tier teams in our league. Well, now, now have I know you said you had some seniors, so that means you had to do a little recruiting. Have you signed, yeah. signed any, any ladies yet? And, and, and exactly who, who have you signed? Yeah, we had to hit the ground running. So like I said, we lost six, six young ladies. 
and we had to bring in seven. So we're, we're going to look a little new to our Eagle Nation out there, but um, we're young. So this is going to be the youngest that I think I've ever had on the roster. So we brought in a lot of strong freshmen and, and a lot of local freshmen. So one of the things I wanted to do, because if you're an athlete, you want to play inside of a gym or an arena that is filled and packed. And so we want to kind of make sure that we hit the these grassroots kind of high schools, these programs back in the woods or whatever. We went out and found some of the really good, talented players here in Georgia, and, and we brought them in. We got region player of the years coming in, um, Taryn Ward. We got a hometown uh, favorite right here in Statesboro. We, we recruited her. So she would stay right here in Statesboro and, and Lacey Robinson. She's another region player of the year. Um, we got another country gal from Waycross, a junior college transfer, um, Shondell, who is actually a mother. And so, and we also have a young lady who's on our team that also has a, a baby. So we have two mothers on our roster. Oh, wow. And I think that is something unique in itself um and then we brought some more um, players in we got two cali kids coming in phenomenal they're they're phenomenal so we got much bigger we got much stronger we got a six five post player out of atlanta westlake high school which is a dominant high school in the state of georgia um coming off state championship so um we, we brought a lot of strong players in we're looking to get this transfer we haven't signed her yet, but I so I can't say her name, but we're looking to bring in a strong transfer to kind of help us go along with, with some of this youth that we're bringing in. But we, we hit the ground running. So my staff and I, I think that a really good job to kind of go with the pieces that we already have returning so that we'll, we'll make a, a better statement in the Sun Belt. You guys got Coach Terry following the Jaguars on your schedule coming up this season? Yes, we got Terry and him. Yes, yes, yes. That's a good, good friend of mine. He has a really strong staff. And uh, we actually recruited some of the same players um, that he has. He's bringing in this year. So, you know, I know they're going to be pretty strong. Um, they're, they're typically one of the top teams in the Sun Belt. So he does a phenomenal job. He has one girl on his team that takes charges. She takes about 10 to 12 charges a game. We call her. She flops everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I can't wait. I'm going to make sure I'm at that game. If you, you guys travel here, uh, to South, down here to South Alabama, I'm going to have to catch that game. Because yeah. I do believe with the team, with the with the players you say you have on your roster coming in, and I'm just thinking about his roster, I'm like, oh, man, that is going to be yeah. a grudge match. And uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's great. I can, I'm can i going to be right there. I'm going to do the eye test right there on scene. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's good. That is good. Yeah, we do travel down there. I actually have family – in Mississippi, that's going to make that game as well. That's right there by uh, Mobile. I think they're in Mobile, correct? So okay. I'll be down in that way. Oh, man, that's good. That's good. So what is your coaching philosophy? You know, I saw your, your girls on the tape, and they look like they get after it. I saw a couple clips where the camera kind of panned to you, and you you up there pointing and hooping and hollering. And <laughs> what, is, what, is, what is Coach Howard's philosophy of playing basketball? <laughs> Well, I love practices to be hard so the game can be easy and fun, but we're definitely up tempo. I know a lot of a lot of coaches say that, but you know, we don't do a whole lot of offensive sets. I have some quick hitters, but we kind of focus mainly on our transition offense and our secondary offense. And so um defense is is the offense. So we we switch up our defenses a lot. We press, we three quarter press, we we run and jump. And so you know, you're not able to show all that in year one because, like I said, everyone is learning a new system. And so it was kind of difficult for them to pick up everything. And so I think one of the things that makes you a strong coach is you got to figure out what your team does well. So if I say I want to press for 40 minutes and my team just does not press for 40 minutes that well, then you got to change it up and figure out what we do well. Um, this year we did a real good job with our matchup zone. And so it's kind of like a man-to-man -man and, and a zone defense all in one. I thought we picked that up pretty well. And so, you know, I would anticipate with these young freshmen coming in, with these fresh legs, we should be able to get up and people stuff a little bit more aggressively. That's what I'm hoping. And then we do have a rim protector. We got a 6'5", six, 6'2". Six, so we got some rim protectors now who can protect the pain and allow our guards to get out and defend a little more heavier. But um, we got a mantra. We always say, you know, our culture is be ready. And it's spelled B-E-R-E-A-D-I. And all that means is an acronym that says, you know, we want them to believe in the vision. So my vision is always going to be, you know, to win a championship. We want to educate our athletes to graduate. You know, they're student athletes. I'm a mom. I have three kids, two in college and one on the way. He just graduated. He'll graduate in a couple of days. Um, and so they, they have to get that piece of paper in their hand. Um, we got to recruit to compete. And how we spell compete, I told y'all, 
I got a lot of Howard isms. So compete is not spelled regular. It's C O M P H E A T. So when we say compete, that means bring the heat. So we want to recruit those athletes that can bring the heat. You know, it don't have to be pretty. You don't have to be all athletic, but I want you to be able to dive on the floor for loose balls, you know, take charge or sacrifice your body and, and things of that nature. Um, and then we, we got to encourage vitamin E. Vitamin E for us is, you know, if you take vitamins, it's a healthy dose of, of whatever you take the vitamin for. For us, it's energy, effort, and efficiency. So that's our vitamin, vitamin E. And then you got to develop. You got to develop the athlete um, firm, fair, and consistent. So like I said, I like to have fun. But I'm a military brat, so there's a disciplinary component to how I coach. And so in some pictures, you might see me get up in people's face or fuss or whatever. But you're able to do that if you love them off the court. And so I'm able to get up in their stuff on the court because, you know, I show them some some love behind the scenes. And then um, the I is for involved. You got to involve them forever. So after they graduate, I just had a player last night send me her baby registry. Um, because her and her husband are having a baby. And so she wow. sent me her baby registry. I got another young lady who's getting married in July and they're going to do a virtual uh, wedding that she she sent me the Zoom to. So you don't just involve them for the four years that you have them. You have to involve them even after. So be ready. Well, I, can, I can tell you this from just listening to what you just said. You sound like you the coach, you the mom, you 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 everything uh, to these players, and that and you know I guess you can get down to their level, and they they understand you, and they and that's that's creating that relationship, you know, with you. But they know you mean business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think everyone craves a, a sense of discipline and organization, and so you know when everyone knows what the vision is, and they're they're a part of the the process that gets you there. And so every year we want to win a championship. Now, are we going to win a championship every year? Probably not. If we do, then I'm, I'm the best coach of the world. But that's the expectation. And so how do we get there? We, we let the players know, hey, this is your role for the team, just like Michael Jordan just had the, the documentary um, Last Dance on, and they talked about the roles on that team and then how their franchise player, Michael, Michael Jordan, figured out how to use his teammates. Everybody has to use everybody, but everybody has a role. And so I think when you, you place the, the different roles on each individual, Everybody knows, okay, I'm supposed to bring the defense. I'm supposed to bring the energy. I'm supposed to bring the rebounding or whatever you think that player can bring. And, of course, everybody for me has to be able to score. I don't tell anyone not to score, but you have to be a scoring threat. Well, that's, man, that's, that's, that's great. I can tell you this. Uh, anybody that want to come play play for Coach Howard, I tell you, they better be ready uh, to get it because uh, a lot yes. of kids, you know, coming out – a lot of kids coming out of high school, you know, they, they – they don't know what to expect when they go to college. It's like a shock when they get out down that court. If if you could talk to a high school senior that's getting ready to play their last season of college, uh, uh, high school basketball, getting ready to go to college to the next level, what what, is, what would you tell that kid? Um, I, I think getting in the weight room. So the difference, in my opinion, the difference between a high school athlete and a junior college or, or a collegiate athlete is just the, the strength of the game. And so that's one of the reasons I think – that this COVID-19 is hurting some programs because you're not able to bring those freshmen in and get them on a strength conditioning program, but love the weight room. And, and, you know, and even if you don't have a weight room available, there's so many things that you can do at home just to kind of get your, your strengths up. And so um, we had a young lady who, who transferred in, or not transferred in, who came in from Laney out of Augusta, a high school kid. She had the freshman body, came in, worked hard, um, she ended up starting 14 games for us, and she was a walk-on. She received a scholarship, you know, this and. And so that's the difference is she got stronger, and she started to to feel better. You feel more confident. You drive to the hole. Now you're not getting bumped out, out the lane. Um, and then you got to put the work in. And so there's a lot of people that transfer. The transfer portal is is on and popping with, with people not happy or just wanting to, to, to go somewhere else. I think you have to understand that there's always going to be a difficult time. And so – you know, I recruit, we got several player of the years coming in, but right now you're not the player of the year anymore. You're the freshman coming in to a program. And so you kind of got to change your mindset to remember I'm leaving high school where I was the all everything. And now I'm starting again from the bottom of the totem pole. Now I play freshman. I start freshman, you know, because basketball I don't know if you're a freshman or a senior just want to be played. But I think your mindset has to be a little bit different because I think at, at this level, at Division One level, it's easy to, to scout a, a person who is athletic. 
But on the high school level, you might not have that many athletic people around you. At the collegiate level, you do. And so now you're not as, as fast, faster than anyone else or stronger than anyone else. So you have to change your mindset and, and understand that now you're working from the bottom up and you can't be complacent. And so if you score 20 points, one game, you got to get in the gym even more, you know, because now the scout report is going to change and they're going to try to take away your right hand or crouch on your, your jump shot. And so now you have to have a counter move. And so I think you have to think about the game a little bit differently because it comes easy. Um, one of the reasons I will stop recruiting someone is if they play to the level of their competition. So I always say, if I tell my assistants that we're going out recruiting and they say, hey, oh, this girl can go, you know, but she's, you know, she's the best one out there. So she don't give her all. I don't want that person. I want the person that wants to give her all, no matter the level of the competition. Um, if you can score 40, score 40. There's no need for you. Anytime you touch the court, you got to give it your individual best. And so that's what we're looking for. And, you know, I, I've seen a lot of kids. My own sons did that, too. I have a son that plays at Charleston Southern University. He'll be a senior this upcoming senior season. Uh, oh, wow. And he would doubt. Yeah, he's in the Big South. <laughs> 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 I saw you guys beat Winthorpe and you beat Charleston Southern uh, this past season. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But, yeah. no, but, like, yeah. he would dial down his play because of the who he was playing wasn't up to his level. And I'm like, no, you got to continue to go get all what, – what somebody say, all gas and no breaks. Uh, breaks. You, you just got to just gotta keep playing, man. And and Because and somebody – you don't never know who's watching you. And I tell these kids mm -hmm. nowadays, stop playing down to the competition that you have and just play your game because, if like you just said, if they're dialing down their game, you're not going to recruit them. And, you know, you can't do that. So. Mm -hmm. Because they'll probably wind up doing that actually in college when they get there. So you learn his repetition. So, uh, Right, but, but, exactly. Well, we definitely uh, appreciate you coming on here today. Um, any any uh, big hitters, non-conference uh, teams that you guys got on the schedule coming this season? Yeah, you talk about Georgia State, in-state rival. Well, well, we'll be playing Georgia Tech this year. So we, we got Georgia Tech on the schedule um, this year. And, and then we got we got more home games. Thank you, Jesus. Than we had this past year, we was on the road a lot. And so we will be playing at Georgia Tech, but um, Furman comes to us. We're actually playing in a tournament, a conference tournament at Georgia State. And so we'll be playing Western Carolina and uh, UT Chattanooga at Georgia wow. State. And so that, that'll be a kind of interesting tournament at our rival place, but we're not playing Georgia State with the conference challenge. So, um, yeah, so we got some pretty strong non-conference. Now we had to kind of take away some games due to, to COVID-19. We were supposed to go out to uh, North Dakota. We were supposed to go to Florida, uh, excuse me, California and play in a tournament and play some games. And so we're staying more regionally right now, just, you know, for budget purposes. Um, but once everything lifts up, we hope to kind of still have our foreign tour and let the players kind of experience the world. Some players have never traveled this past year. We had a freshman that had never flown on an airplane. And so those are things that I like for the game of basketball to, to do for our young ladies. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have it. Georgia Southern women's head basketball coach, Anita Howard. Thank you for coming on the network today, Coach. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right.